Hello and welcome. Thank you so much for joining me on my program. I appreciate you wherever you are connecting from. If you are joining me from any part of the world, I thank you very much for your contributions on this channel. Please kindly subscribe if you have not subscribed and also click the notification bell so that you be notified each time I upload a video. You will be among the first to receive it. In this channel, I bring information to your doorstep. I bring news from all channels, from every angle. Things that have to do about the world, things that have to do about Africa, more especially Nigeria. I bring it to your doorstep. Some informations that you ignore, some information that you cannot be able to come across. I look for them, I bring it to your doorstep for you to see. Every video you see on this channel is for educational purposes. Uh, some years back, you will be joining us very shortly. Well, uh, gentlemen, let, let, let's, let's begin. Let's quickly, let's uh, have your take uh, or your views on events of this outgoing week. There have been monumental events that have taken place this uh, uh, outgoing week. The could uh, jailbreak or could uh, jail attack as uh, is being referred to and the escape of hundreds of emails, dangerous terrorist inmates who escaped from that prison and of course the bandit attack on the advance on the convoy of an advanced team of the president to casino two two events that of course seem to have uh, uh, shaken the fabric of our security <coughs> system in the last couple of days what what what, what, what what's your take what what are your views on these two events first and foremost well no doubt we are facing enormous security challenges. When you see what is going on, it's a very disappointing to see a series of attacks happening. And, um, you know, the emphasis, the security agencies, they need to do more than what they are doing now. The time for urgency is now. They have to be more proactive instead of being reactive. Most of the time, the system here were always uh, reactive instead of being proactive. We have to be able to catch them before they execute their plans. In the planning process, we should be able to know what is going on, and we should be able to stop it, to terminate whatever plans they have before the plans are executed. The incident at the Kujé prison is unacceptable in the sense that for such an attack to happen in such an institution, it's clear that there is gross uh, deficiency in the system, gross failure in the system. So it's not just uh, the issue of people in authority to be doing what I will refer to as uh, eye service making people believe they are doing what they are supposed to be doing. This now cannot be hidden from anybody. It's clear to the world that people who are supposed to be doing what they are doing, people who are supposed to be in charge of our security, they are not doing what they are supposed to be doing. It's obvious. It cannot be hidden anymore. For such an attack to happen, is such an institution, prison uh, correctional center, for an elongated period like that, is scary. That means nobody is safe anywhere in this country. So the time for urgency is now. We have to start to take very proactive steps, prudent steps, to make sure that we are able to counter the threat before us. The threat before us is serious and it's no joke. Yes, I was just going to ask you about that. How serious is the threat? Well, from what you have seen, from what you have observed, 
Well, uh, when you see, when you look at the security setup, I'm a security expert. As an officer in the United States, I have been operating my own security firm for more than 22 years in America. So most of my jobs are government contracts. You cannot be a government contractor if you don't know what you are doing. So our company here in Nigeria, we are looking at you know, what we can do for the country. The threat before us is so big. So big in the sense that nobody is safe. They can go anywhere. They have the capability. For these people to operate in a certain like Kujie prison, and they were there for several hours. Over two hours. Over two hours. And there was no counter attack. I mean, that is unacceptable. Unacceptable. M Mr. Nobori, uh, just uh, a few days ago, we were here and we were discussing uh, the MOU, the Memorandum of Understanding between Nigeria and the United Kingdom on, on the repatriation of what the, U the UK government, the British government described as dangerous criminals back into Nigeria. And on that occasion, we were looking at the situation in Nigerian prisons. We were looking at the environment in Nigerian prisons, not knowing that this was go going to happen just a few days after. Now, this is a correctional facility or a prison facility uh, where, as it has turned out, many people may not have known this before, very many dangerous terrorist uh, 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 individuals were held, and yet it turns out that the security in that uh, prison, that, that, that correctional service, was not up to par. Uh, well, uh, thank you very much, Imoni. Um, there is no doubt that uh, uh, emotions are high, nerves are on end uh, on the account of what uh, the unfortunate attack on the Median Security Cafeteria Center in uh, Kujie. Uh, the only thing I want to say is that uh, to make an appeal that uh, we deploy our energy resources time more to focus on areas that we need to figure out what we need to do to stop this unacceptable development that is attack on custodial facilities. Now to come directly to the question you asked. Yes, the MOU on migration returns was signed um, I can remember on the 22nd of February uh, this year, um, when the MOU was signed, uh, it was with some conditions, which of course Nigeria Correctional uh, Service has already met. Uh, the conditions uh, in uh, part of the uh, things they wanted was to see upgrade in our facilities, to see what we have on ground. Uh, with respect to reformation and rehabilitation of uh, inmates in our custody, uh, you, all, you, you are already aware that uh, there is a concept to build uh, 3,000 capacity ultra-modern uh, custodial centers in uh, each of the six geopolitical zones across the country. We have that of Janguza in uh, Kano, uh, near 95% uh, completion now. Uh, there is one in, in uh, the Federal Capital Territory here in Karishi. Another one has taken off in Bori, in River State, due to other uh, three geopolitical zones. Uh, these are uh, many other rehabilitation uh, work uh, that have been carried out in uh, the existing uh, custodial centers. And I want to quickly add that um, but for the unfortunate development in Kujie, the song in the Nigerian Correctional Service had already started uh, in the, in, uh, on a positive note. We already started witnessing a paradigm shift from the custodial facilities we used to have in the past that many people regarded as punitive. You will recall that we have 
uh, it was uh, revealed a couple of weeks back that over 1,004 units are currently undergoing their various degree programs in the in the consider uh, centers, and uh, six of them are doing their PhD program. We are not talking about the subject uh, trades that the inmates are exposed to. All these uh, programs are directed at rehabilitation, rehabilitating uh, the offenders that are kept in custody with a view to returning them to society as normal human beings. You know? So it is unfortunate that this uh, incident happened and which appears to cast a veil on the progress that this service is making. And let us not also forget that is a huge security challenge that is facing the entire country. So that's why I started by saying that we, we I, I made an appeal that we should concentrate more of our energy and time to evolving strategies to stopping the general security uh, uh, challenges that are afflicting the nation as a whole. You know, without I, as part of the changes uh, that are taking place in the correctional service, for instance, should there be a difference between uh, persons who are kept in detention for correctional purposes and those who are who are in prison serving terms for criminal activities because in the case of of Kujia prison for instance it is be, it become very apparent now that we kept both those who were there for uh, for civil offenses and those who are even awaiting for criminal for terrorist activities yes. we kept all of them in the same facility shouldn't there be a difference yes uh, I, I will respond to that by saying uh, number one we all know that we have infrastructure gap then number two those that are awaiting trial they constitute close to 72 percent of the inmates you have in that facility and this is the, the same picture you have across the country and we have never ceased to appeal to relevant authorities to step up trial processes. And most the, the, the interesting thing, apart from the Kujie incident, most of the states across uh, the consider center we have in other states, the offenders, about more than ninety percent of them, are uh, committed state offenses, which presupposes that you needed the uh, instrumentalities of the state. To prosecute those that are there awaiting trial, but we 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 still don't seem to have some of these uh, uh, things working the way we want. Okay, look at 2019. The Nigerian Correctional Service Act was, uh, I mean, came uh, came on board. As part of the provisions uh, in, in that, act, we we have trial process provisions to expedite trial process of those that are detained awaiting trial. We have provisions for those that have stayed as content inmates and have tried all their uh, 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 all the available windows up to Supreme Court and they, they cannot succeed. Instead of leaving them there interminably, dying every day waiting for the hangman, so we now have a provision there that gives express approval for state judge to commit the uh, death sentence of such a person that has spent over 10 years awaiting hard man to life imprisonment. But I ask you, how many state uh, judges have done that? We have a provision that uh, involves non-custodial punishment for those for minor infractions. Because we also discovered that uh, traffic of uh, offense, uh, uh, minor uh, uh, squabbles, they all ended up behind bars. The provision has also captured non uh, custodial sentencing, in which case you can sentence such a person to uh, community service that would not necessarily be useful to, useful to his family and useful to the community because you have violated the, 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 the laws of the, com of the land. So instead of being kept and wasting government money, go to the street be of use to the community and then uh, uh, also help your family and you you would uh, you, you would not be part of those that will be congesting the facility how many of 
uh, 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 state uh, instruments are doing that. And we keep, we, let us also ask, the, 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 the act was enacted in 2019. Up to date, I don't know, as at the time I left the office, I doubt if uh, th there was no dime released to the service to actualize the provisions of that act. I don't know what the situation uh, will be now. Also, th th this gaps, we, if we have a system, for instance, the Kujeri uh, incident, if we have a, a system that enables, uh, the, that will enable the uh, cor uh, uh, correctional uh, service to have a separate infrastructure dedicated to high caliber uh, 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 offenders, whether they are or convicted. Isn't that why they have maximum and minimum uh, uh, correctional centers? I was just coming to that. Now, I told you that we have a concept now that involves constructing a 3,000 uh, ultra-modern capacity uh, consider centers in the country. Now, we have a new sheriff in town. That is banditry. I would have expected that the required urgency will be given to construction of this infrastructure. The one in Karishi is ongoing, but the pace does not seem to uh, 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 align with the the security situation we have on ground. So we we need to deliberately do certain things to respond to a uh, current security challenges. Mm. So okay. Uh, well, we, we have now been joined by Major General Henry Ayola, retired Major General, former Commander Special Task Force Operation Safe Haven. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you uh, very from, much. From the reports we have had from the prison attack in Kuje, well over 60. In fact, the, the, the Minister of Defense says over 64 hardened criminals, uh, bandits, and terrorists escaped from that facility. Among the over 800 plus uh, inmates that uh, escaped from that facility, there are at least over 60 of them who were uh, in detention. Some of them just moved from Shiroro into Kuje for terrorist activities, for uh, very hardened criminal activities and all of that. How much threat does that pose to the civil populace and to our entire security architecture? Well, thank you very much. I listening to uh, the spokesperson of the service former, speaking. Former spokesperson. Oh, former service. spokesperson, yes. okay. Uh, I begin to have some kind of empathy with the service, you know, in terms of uh, the kind of priority they should have enjoyed. But coming specifically to your question, I, I think it's okay. self -evident that, uh, <laughs> evident that we are dealing with a very bad situation. I mean, knowing the nature of the people that escaped and the purpose for even releasing them, that's where our worry should start from. I mean, it points, it portends so much danger. In fact, beyond danger is that there must be a reason why now. I mean, they didn't get there yesterday, or they didn't get there a day, a day before the attack. So it tells you there must be something in the often why it is now they are attacking the place to release their members. And I mean, I can extrapolate from that and say, well, maybe they have an impending operation that requires a boost of their size, of their strength, of their force. And hence, they, they think this the time to do it. Uh, well, that should put all the security, the entire security sector on a, on a high alert and begin to do some preemptive things, take some preemptive measures, which also should have been taken, you know, before now, even before this happened. I've always spoken about having a system of systems. This incident brings to the fore several relevant questions we should be asking ourselves. Okay, I mean, talking about the service, the service is just somewhere in the chain. But starting from the grand strategic level, you know, to the, to the National Security Council, which of course the Minister of Interior is a member, and to interministerial committees that should exist, that should combine the relevant security sectors, uh, ministries, departments, and agencies, to play that interrelated and inter, you know, overlapping roles. That has never been. We've never had this kind of interministerial area interagency standing statutory committees because what touches the correctional service touches immigration touches uh, the armed forces touches the police touches the civil defense is there any such existing committee no 
No. So when we expect some miracles, when incidents happen, I begin to wonder what kind of person are we? We've not put structures, I mean, statutory structures, things that should enable us to be able to respond appropriately and decisively to issues. And then we're expecting the response from where? Who are we? Have they, do we have a response plan that have been rehearsed by all the agencies that are involved before? So what we expect that on the day of calamity, then you expect from nowhere something we just spring off? No, that's not that's not how it happens. So it, this gives us a good opportunity now to put this kind of interministerial interagency committees in place. Let them come up with a solid response plan, a contingency plan that will be rehearsed on a regular basis so that when things like this happen, there is already a drill, some standard operating procedures which all the relevant agencies have practiced together and they can spread it up and make it happen. That's how it works. So when, you, don't when have you talk about this kind of synergy, yeah. because that's the, w w what I see uh, what you're talking about, yeah. what is the office of the a national security advisor supposed to be doing is it not supposed to be aggregating all of these things bringing all these services together all the um, uh, ministries and all the agencies of government that are related to national security and uh, forging a united front yeah thank you that's a good question uh, that again comes down to your systems what did we craft as our security architecture what is in the system, what is in the structure, right from the policy level to the strategy level, to the processes and procedures and, you know, standard of prison procedure, to the checklists and routines and drills. For example, if, you, if I ask the question, in that correctional facility, when last they carry out their routine procedures of counter-attack of this nature, was there a standard operating procedure practice that evening before the night? Was there a, a, a stand-down or stand-up you know, security alert practice that was done. The structure that ought to be there, the, the CCTV, the, the counters, you know, signal intelligence, communication intelligence. The structure itself, do we have a national template of what a medium security correctional center should have? In terms of civil structure, in terms of communication, in terms of CCTV, in terms of command control, communication, computer intelligence, surveillance and uh, reconnaissance system do we have so when well, we don't put these things in place and we're expecting the men to do some wonder i begin to wonder we are with where is our thinking arising from we don't have these things in place and then you expect uh, the day of adversity uh, some magic will just happen or some miracle will just happen no it doesn't work like that anywhere mm. now, yeah mr murphy the, the president when he visited uh Kujie, uh did lament what he referred to or his disappointment about uh the intelligence system the intelligence network and some of the uh security organizations uh, have come out to say look we provided intelligence about this before it happened and probably was not taken seriously there was no synergy between all the services as the general has uh, put it that may have been responsible for this this is a failure of intelligence or the inability to operationalize